So wouldn't it be amazing if we were so empowered and aware that we could sort out our own emotions and our ensuing health problems without resorting to medications and all those very difficult side effects you sometimes get. But what if you are stuck and you think, oh goodness me, this is, this is difficult, I think I need to see a doctor. Well, let's take a closer look at allopathic medicine, which is why you've got to be so aware. Uh, matching drugs with biochemicals. Let's look at GABA and ibuprofen. So what is GABA? GABA is gamma amniobutylic acid and it's a neurotransmitter in the brain and it balances neuron activity and when you get children with um, ADHD or autism you find that and dementia by the way you find that their GABA levels are severely interfered with and also if your memory is going to that that uh, makes a big difference its frequency is in the note of G sharp but every frequency has its opposite balance and hydrochloric acid just happens to resonate exactly like a seesaw uh, in the note of D in opposition to GABA. So it's one thing, got hydrochloric acid on one side, GABA on the other. When you are in balance, you've got a clear mind and you've got good digestion. Ibuprofen just so happens to be the same frequency as GABA. And it interferes with your neuron activity. When you take too much ibuprofen, you know there's been a lot of talk about, oh no, you can't have more than two weeks of ibuprofen now. But it wasn't like that all the time. <clears throat> and it also affects your digestion. So the result, if you take too much ibuprofen, you get loss of memory, indigestion, or possibly even a stomach ulcer. And it's even written on the packet at the back. If you look at the uh, possible side effects, that's the first one that comes up. But I can prove that this is what it's doing. That's exactly what it's doing. Thyroxine and caffeine. If you have an overactive thyroid, uh, the extra thyroxine makes you feel jittery, your heart races, uh, you feel restless, you can't sleep, and you could possibly even lose weight. Although, mind you, some of us, I wouldn't mind doing a bit of losing weight myself. <laughs> but you can also feel like that if you overdosed on strong coffee. So what's the commonality? Caffeine and thyroxine are the same frequency. When you overdose, you get the same symptoms. And here's one more thing to make you think. What links these four things together, multiple sclerosis, cannabidiol, or that's, a, that's the correct name for cannabis, pregnancy and progesterone. Women who have multiple sclerosis always go into remission when they get pregnant. Now, has anybody ever thought why? Estrogen or progesterone? No. Not estrogen, good guess. The progesterone. the progesterone, okay. And if you take uh, marijuana in the right, correct form, it can really, really help with multiple sclerosis. Progesterone and cannabin cannabis or cannabidiol, CBD, whatever you want to call it, are the same, it's the same frequency as progesterone. Now, can you imagine what the drug companies would do if they realized that that was the case? I mean, you could actually give women who had MS progesterone. Should work. Why not? <clears throat> right, some well-known diseases have very typical sound patterns. So cancer in females is, listen, uh, is linked to the note of B and C uh, being missing, and C sharp is also very much related to breast cancer <coughs> and ovarian cancer. The MS and Parkinson's is always found with the note of D missing. Uh, constipation, allergies, liver disorders is D sharp. Too much D sharp. These notes are always out of balance. So they're not bad notes or good notes, they're just out of balance. 
emphysema, dairy allergies and lung diseases as E, prostate cancer, kidney disease, <coughs> bladder issues, the note of F usually, F through to F sharp. Depression and thyroid is G and G sharp. Uh, immune system and issues with your eyes or your knees is A. And this is just a very small selection. Uh, epilepsy, immunity, eyes and uh, people who need anger management, generally too much A sharp. And systemic disease, body electricity, deafness, vitality, all that sort of stuff is in the note of B. So we've then come to the muscle frequencies and muscles are grouped uh, by kind of note around your body. So if you've had a stressful day at work and you've got a headache, your cross balance of E and A sharp and C sharp and G is out. And your jaw muscles, you, it's like you find yourself clenching your jaw at night, grinding your teeth. Um, and you can see that on the chart there. But if you look at this chart, this gets down to the real nitty gritty of numbers down to one hundredth of a hertz. They're very important, very important indeed, as every muscle has its own frequency and it will vary by a hundredth of a hertz or so depending on how tall you are, how small you are, how big you are, because everybody's muscle mass is different, but they're all contained within the same similar area. So if you don't have enough B, C or C sharp in your voice, you might just get not cancer necessarily, but you might just get an issue in your arms, your wrists, <clears throat> your hands or your neck, or people with repetitive strain injury usually have no C-sharp at all. Women who can't get pregnant, no C-sharp at all. And all you need to do is get, bring back the balance. That's it's as easy as that. And all of these things, all the, the muscles and, and uh, uh, chemicals and that, we have a map for all of them or, well, I say all of them, 99%. But what about the deeper emotional trauma? And how many times have you heard people say you're never upset for the reason you think? Which is very true because sometimes people get angry and it's not about what's happening here and now in front of them. It's about something that they're really mad about that happened maybe in their childhood or 10 years ago or how they feel about themselves. So traumatic events retain strong beliefs and emotions as frequency held in your, I mean, you all know about your energetic body, right? Everybody knows that we have a body electric and we all know that we, we, we don't necessarily store memories in the brain. We store them in our field. Uh, and and in the, in the organs. I mean, just look at the research done on people who have heart transplants and then find themselves with the same characteristics as the donor because the muscle memory is there. It's fantastic, it's phenomenal, it's really interesting and it's an area that I'm so interested in. So it, not your, your subconscious not, not only stores them as uh, frequency patterns, but in different octaves too. Like the child who witnessed the event at two, her frequencies were stored up high. I've known people with, with uh, frequencies stored on every other octave. You know, like a piano, when you go up every octave, and one octave will be fine, and then the next octave... I had a pulse oximeter on her, her heart rate went up to 180 on the following octave with the same sound. I did the higher octave, it was fine again, and then the next octave up, wow, bam, off she went, her blood pressure went up. That was where she was storing all her trauma. But of course, it will come out. In some way or other, it comes out. <clears throat> so the best thing to do is to be aware and, and find a way to uh, help it out and then erase it. So because we're all so different, we get lots of different health problems. Everybody knows that you can have 10 people go in a room with somebody with malaria and six people will get it and four won't. Or something, you know, something like that. Um, and it's because we all have different strengths and weaknesses. 
within the vocal range of our voice. And that, again, depends on the, indivi the individual person and how happy or not happy you are. Because if you're happy, you're more likely to be very much more balanced than anyone else. Okay, so going back to this, everyone has a unique octave of sound, astrologically calculated, using a very specific scale and pitch. And people ask me, do I use this? Do I use that? Do I use 432? Mm, do I? <laughs> I'm not telling. But I don't use 432, but it's close. But, and I, the, the, the octave and the pitch that I use, I arrived at that through years and years of hindsight, double testing, and I've loads and loads of research, so I do know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so up here, you can now see this little uh, thing on the board we call a pod. And up at the top will be your sun sign. So this is for an Aries at the, the note of C. Um, and that represents the self. That represents the you inside that only you know. So, uh, are there any Aries in the audience? No, yes, yes, no? One at the back, okay. Um, Cancerians, yeah, D sharp. Taurus, one C sharp. God, you must be all Sagittarians then. Yes. yes. <laughs> Yes, very good. Well, whatever. Okay, so this is just based on, a, on an Aries chart. So the C at the top, which represents the self that only you know. The opposite note, and this is, we call it the reciprocal. There's only one way to describe it. But mathematically, it's, it's a perfect opposition, is who you are in the outside world. So you are seeing me now as I am in the outside world. I'm giving a talk. This is not me, the inside me. And I bet you if I measured my voice right now, my F sharp would be through the roof. But this is the inner and outer self. So that, that if you have issues with not feeling good about yourself, or you're very, very shy, and you couldn't speak in front of public, or you, you're, you're very nervous about getting a job, or, or that sort of thing, then your inner and outer is out of balance. When you start to worry about all kinds of things all the time to do with the self, then usually your voice is going to be mostly in your sun sign and not, you haven't got the confidence to go to that other place. Okay? Now, the two notes on the outside, outside influences. On this particular one is D sharp and A. And these two notes are 90 degrees away from the other two. And those two notes are affected most keenly by anything that comes at you from life. So that would be your parents, that would be husbands, wives, schooling, work, uh, even something like a bus knocking you over. Anything that comes at you from the outside, those will be your weak points. And you can, uh, even when it comes down to explaining why someone falls over and breaks a particular part of their body. Why do they break their leg and not their arm? Why do they break their shoulder and not their knee? Wherever your weakness is, your weakest note, is the bit that will go first whenever you have an accident. <clears throat> so on the other positions here, uh, in uh, where F and G are, we call those, those relate to childhood, the past, genetic, spiritual, uh, all that kind of stuff. And I, I have particular formulas that I use sounds together to make different musical intervals, which make a huge difference. When I give you uh, what I call a, a light formula, I can take you back to your childhood. Don't ask me how it works, but it does. 30 years of experience says it really, really does. Or if you had, say for example, you're miserable now, but you had a good childhood, 
instead of taking you back to your childhood to see what might have gone on if it was traumatic, I can bring your childhood back to you. It's amazing how it works. You wouldn't think, you couldn't make it up, I don't think. It's like amazing. Um, but this is just, this is just all about emotional and physical balancing. When it comes to the deeper stuff, such as looking at chemistry and trying to fix uh, a disease or even what you might call a genetic problem that the doctor said, oh, well, it's inherited, you can't do anything about that, then that's a different area altogether. Uh, much more, um, yeah, not quite as simple as this.